testing. Testing for the expensive and innovative TSR-2 was rocky at best. In February 1964, an engine exploded during a testbed run. The experts could not figure out why. Soon after, the first airframe was disassembled at the test center. This resulted in a logistical issue that postponed testing for a three-month period. That summer, pre-flight tests began slowly due to problems with the engines and the landing gear. Another engine blew up while tested. It was discovered that the issue was rooted in the low-pressure turbine shaft malfunctioning. However, the problem was never fully resolved, and even under such conditions, the government insisted on launching the first full test flight before the 1964 election, but the Labour Party was expected to rise to power afterward. Celebrated test pilot Roland Beaumont was called on board to conduct this flight, knowing that the engines could explode. He would later state that, quote, the first flight was more a political gesture than a logical stage in a professionally conducted technical program. The flight took place at the Aeroplane and Armament Experimental Establishment in Wiltshire on September 27, 1964. The flight was successful, but the landing gear did not retract after takeoff. That same problem persisted until the 10th test. The 14th test saw the first supersonic flight and the aircraft reached Mach 1. By the end of the program, 24 test flights had taken place. All of these used the rudimentary and incomplete versions of the aircraft, which several test pilots repeatedly claimed were outstanding. Still, major electronic components were missing, and the aircraft was not reaching the required goal set out by OR-343. In an attempt to save costs and continue with the project, the requirements were reduced to reach a combat radius of 650 nautical miles, a maximum speed of Mach 1.75, and a takeoff run-up of 3,000 feet instead of 1,800. 